Welcome back, everyone. Today we begin week two of our Profiles in Faith, and we come to the story of Jacob. We left, our, we left off our Profiles on Friday with Isaac. With his wife, Rebecca, Isaac had twin sons, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the older, so he would have been the rightful heir to the prime birthright and prime blessing of Isaac. But while in the womb, Rebecca had a vision that it was actually Jacob who would stand above and that Esau would serve Jacob. And so the story began from there. It starts with Jacob working is his way into Esau's birthright, the inheritance, if you will. Starved for food, Esau comes to Jacob looking for a meal, and Jacob obliges on one condition, that Esau pledge his birthright to Jacob, which he does. That birthright, however, was nothing compared to the blessing of Isaac, a blessing that was understood to include the continuation of the covenant that God had made with Abraham. So Jacob proceeds to snag that away as well. While his brother is out hunting, Jacob puts on furry clothing so that he'd be hairy to the touch like Esau was, and then he takes food into his blind father, and he tricks Isaac into giving him the blessing. From there, Jacob's story continues on as he meets Rachel, has children, and then eventually comes to Peniel and his wrestling match with God. This is a reading from the 32nd chapter of Genesis, starting with the 22nd verse. That same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let go unless you bless me. So the man said to Jacob, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, what is, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the thigh muscle that is on the hip socket, because he struck Jacob on the hip socket at the thigh muscle. It's that one line that I think echoes with such strength through this story. I will not let go. Those are the words of Jacob. I think I think this notion of wrestling with God, of fighting to hang on to God, it kind of runs beneath Jacob's story from start to finish. He knew what it was to have the blessing of God. He knew what it was to have the promise of God's provision and God's care. And he knew he was not going to let that go, no matter what obstacle stood in his way. Now, understand that I'm not defending the methods of Jacob here. There are all sorts of theological conversations to be had about 
how it is that all this unfolds. And, and my point's not to tackle that here, but my point is to highlight his determination, his commitment, his devotion to fighting for the blessing of God in his life, no matter what obstacles stood in his way. If he had to wrestle with God, he would wrestle with God. But no matter how hard the struggle became, he was not going to let go. I think we've all had those times in our lives in which we have found ourselves wrestling with God. And, and I think the circumstances that we know today are about as likely as any to send us into that ring. How could God do this? How can God let all this happen? Where is God in the midst of this struggle? Why isn't God sparing my loved one from this pain or adversity? I could, I could go on and on with the questions that I know are erupting in the hearts and minds of many today. And I know that those questions begin to spur the consternation and the doubt that so quickly cloud our relationship with God. And no, I don't have answers to them. These are questions to which we don't have answers. These are mysteries that will remain until the day in which our knowledge is no longer limited by the constraints of this life. So for that reason, as much as anything, these are the questions that will have us wrestling with God. And I think it's important for us to be reminded that that's okay. Wrestling with God in the face of trial is okay. Giving voice to the unanswerable queries of our hearts is okay. Grabbing hold of God and speaking to the hurt of our souls is okay. But as we wrestle, there is a lesson to be learned from Jacob. Jacob knew that on the other side of the wrestling, there was a greater understanding of God's blessing in his life. And I just want to suggest that the same is true for us. I spent most all of last week talking about our invitation to trust in God in one manner or another. There are moments, however, when leaning into that trust is harder than others. I'm pretty sure there are some out there feeling that way right now. If that's you in big or small ways, if that's you, there is a lesson to be learned from Jacob. A lesson that clinging to God, wrestling with those questions, and clamoring for God's peace in the face of your doubts and adversity will lead you to an even greater understanding of God's peace and God's presence in your life. There will be times at which it is harder to lean into that trust than it is at others. But Jacob refused to let go no matter what obstacle stood in his way. And his life, his faith, his relationship with God was better for it. In the depths of my soul, I am convinced the same can and will be true for us. We just refuse to let go. Let's pray together. God of love, you have walked beside your children from the very beginning. And you have invited your beloved to rest in your promises, your care. 
So help us, God, to have the courage to wrestle, the courage to struggle with the queries of our hearts, that by clinging to your love, we may know ever more fully the depths of your blessing, your presence, and your care in our every day. In his name, amen. Blessings upon all of you. God be with you. I'll see you tomorrow.